a revolutionary movement. That's how we see nullification today. True revolutionary movements rarely advance under a single, narrow impetus or focus. They are, as Murray Rothbard wrote, made by a mass of people, people who are willing to rupture the settled habits of a lifetime, including especially the habit of obedience to an existing government. Although revolutionary, the nullification movement of today is not a stereotypical revolution. That is, an uprising characterized by a physical upheaval against the established order. Instead, it's a deeper, more philosophical revolution. It's a revolution in thought. John Adams described the American Revolution against the British in much the same way. In his 1818 letter to Hezekiah Niles, he wrote, But what do we mean by the American Revolution? Do we mean the American War? The revolution was effected before the war commenced. The revolution was in the minds and hearts of the people, a change in their religious sentiments of their duties and obligations. This radical change in the principles, opinions, sentiments, and affections of the people was the real American Revolution. Today's nullification movement is revolutionary because it offers the hope of smashing the established political order. It gives us an alternative to voting the bums out, which only results in new bums who violate the Constitution in more costly and dangerous ways each year. And it reminds us that we don't need to rely on the federal government to limit its own power. People have already gotten the ball rolling on each of the nullification strategies we've already shared in this series. Although we limited it to 10 primary issues, you can apply these strategic approaches to just about anything. What's needed, of course, is you. And while it might seem that the actions of one person are small, every step for liberty is actually huge. As the penman of the revolution put it, small things grow great by concord. <laughs>